We're taking you live to Griffith, New South Wales, where Premier Dominic Perrottet is speaking at the Daily Telegraph 2022 Bush Summit. Around more than 20% of people uh, living in Sydney want to come and live in regional New South Wales, and that says a lot. Now, the old cliche is that country life is tough, but, but people don't choose to live in regional New South Wales because it's tough. They choose to live in regional New South Wales because it's good. There are challenges, no doubt, which we can go through today. Uh, like everywhere, the cost of living, natural disasters that we've faced over the last few years, uh, and economic cycles. But there is no good reason why the quality of life on offer in any regional part of this state can't be as good as anywhere else in the world. In fact, in my view, it can be better, the best. All the ingredients are here, natural environment, resources, advanced economy, amazing people. All our regions are unique, but in order for any of them to fulfil their potential, the same foundations need to be strong. They need infrastructure, big infrastructure, small infrastructure, not just promised, not just in a press release, but actually delivered. Modern services designed around needs, available, accessible, and reliable. Quality homes at affordable prices. An economic opportunity to get a great new job, to grow your business, to build a local, uh, a local industry, to generate prosperity, uh, not just for you and for your family, uh, but also for the place that you call home. If any of these foundations fall down, quality of life suffers. My government understands that securing those foundations is our job. And for more than a decade, we have worked to deliver on each of those fronts. But as Premier, I appreciate that there is always a lot more to do. And that's what I want to talk about today. Let's start with infrastructure. You cannot go to any community in regional New South Wales without seeing the evidence of a decade of infrastructure investment. 51 schools like Armidale Secondary, Carabar High, more than 120 hospitals and healthcare facilities, from the $430 million Wagga Wagga redevelopment to the $35 million centre in Dubbo. More than 50 new bridges from Batemans Bay to Burley Griffin Way, 600 kilometres of safety barriers, 6,000 high risk curve improvements, 1,800 kilometres of dirt road sealed, duplicating the Pacific Highway, eliminating mobile black spots for 28,000 homes and businesses along 1,800 kilometres of regional highway. Now, it might be hard to remember, but this wasn't always the way things were. And it's only happening because we drew a line in the sand and we said that regional delivery will no longer be an optional extra. When we came to office in 2011, we, re we set up Restart New South Wales, an infrastructure fund to rebuild our state, which dedicated significant funding for the bush. That, made, that was all made possible through asset recycling. A controversial policy at the time, but one that unlocked capital that we could invest in the infrastructure to make a real difference to people's lives. That enabled us to build the schools. It enabled us to build the hospitals and the road and rail that could not be possible if we did not have the financial capacity uh, to deliver. Um, we were able to turn projects around that had sat in a too hard basket for too long that we wanted to build or the previous government wanted to build but never had the capacity to do it. Projects like Tamworth Hospital, Wagga and Parks Hospitals. The Pacific Highway duplication, which is now complete, was promised back in 1998, when I was still at school and never built. We instituted programs like fixing country roads and fixing, fixing country rail, a standard practice, and that was fought by the previous National Party advocate, former Minister Duncan Gay. And for 11 years, we have governed as a coalition uh, with regional New, New South Wales in our DNA. And that's enabled us to continue to build and continue to promise and deliver future projects. Road and rail infrastructure that gets product to port faster and unlocks new opportunities for regional New South Wales businesses. A new regional rail fleet, the Coffs Harbour bypass, 
the fast rail network, 93 hospitals underway or, or on track to start, including a state-of-the-art redevelopment at the hospital here in Griffith. There are countless of other projects that we need to keep going, that we need to keep building to keep our region strong. And in just the next year, one third of all schools that we are building across our state will be in regional towns. We will deliver more mobile uh, towers to continue to eliminate black spots across our state. And we are pioneering more programs to make better use of existing towers in place so your phone can get coverage regardless of your carrier if another mobile company has a tower nearby. But smaller scale projects are just as important and we'll keep rolling them out across the bush, like the train station upgrade at Griffith, delivering new lifts and better access. Yes, it's a small project, but it has a massive impact for those people who need it. To put, simple, to put it simply, our government has set a new standard for service delivery in, re in regional New South Wales. We have a track record, but most importantly, we have a plan for the future. And in Deputy Premier Paul Toole and his team in the National Party, we have the fiercest advocates for regional delivery in the New South Wales Parliament. And that's why we'll keep delivering. But government and society and investments is not just about bricks and mortar. It's not just about infrastructure. We know that the services that this infrastructure investment supports are just as important, if not more so. So for 11 years, our state has been on the vanguard of a services revolution. And the biggest impact has been in our regions. Service New South Wales has been a game changer, a game changer for our state and a game changer for service delivery, building services around people not around government. You'll all remember the old days of the RTA. And I remember uh, as, as a finance minister uh, many years ago, when we, when we embarked on service New South Wales, most people thought it was a terrible, terrible idea. For some reason, everyone loved the old RTAs. I couldn't understand it, but they did. Uh, they loved taking a day off work, going in behind the bulletproof glass. You know, you'd press that button to get the ticket, and you'd go and sit down with your novel. And you go back up there, the bulletproof glass, and someone would grunt at you from behind the screen and say, wrong ticket, go back again. That was life. Um, that was life. And I, I was shocked at the time uh, that there was, on talkback radio, everyone thought this was this crazy concept of Service New South Wales. Um, but not only has Service New South Wales turned around customer service in the state and actually made government focus on what it should do, quality service delivery. It provided a significant uh, foundation for our success during the pandemic that other states did not have. Um, and uh, that, that, that chain shows that if governments have the courage to take on new ideas, to take on new reform and to drive quality service delivery, our people are better off um, as a result. 